And the reason why I wanted to have Ron here also, there was some controversial things that happened right at the, just before the state uh, convention where Ron was uh, elected. I, w I wanted to let him have an opportunity to address that, along with a lot of the disgust, Ron, that a lot of the delegates and patriots in this room have about a lot of our elected Republicans yeah. who did not send the Republican electors to Washington yeah. and, and to nullify what they perceived as a fraudulent election. There's going to be some feeling like that. But the real thing is, uh, I want to hear Ron speak, and then we're going to have time for a Q&A afterwards. Let him hear your thoughts and let him. And, and I'd like to say one thing about uh, Ron Weiser. He was um, an ambassador to Slo Slovenia, or to Slovakia, there, to Slovakia, um, appointed by George W. Bush. Um, Ron Weiser has also been a regent for the University of Michigan, and you still are a regent for University of Michigan. And he's been very generous to the Republican Party. He's a great uh, money raiser for that. He's been extremely generous to the University of Michigan. I looked it up and, and uh, I saw numbers that are unbelievable of how generous you've been, which makes me think yeah. you should be able to influence their political bent a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ron Weiser, chairman of the Michigan GOP for the second time. The third time. The third time. <laughs> Somebody just mentioned about running when it's someone's needed, and that's so important for all of you to continue to, to serve, and that's why I'm here. I made the decision to continue to serve, to make sure we had an opportunity to take out those three witches in, in two years from now. Yeah. At any rate, um, I know there'll be a lot of questions. Um, my eyes are all focused on 2022, and I hope all yours are too, because that's what's most important to the, our kids, our grandkids in this state. It's changing this from what it is right now, which is a blue state, to a dark red state, a bright red state, where we, our children and our grandchildren will have a future. We had a, we had a, uh, t today I had the opportunity to go to, I, I, I was on a, a Regents meeting all morning, left in the afternoon and went to Portage, Michigan, where, which is, as you know, west of Kalamazoo, on a trip to help recruit somebody for the Michigan State Board of Trustees, which as a, as a U of M guy was not an easy thing to do, but we're looking for somebody who can win because those are important seats. We want to win all eight of those Ed Board seats in 2022. And um, on the way back, we held a, we held a um, district committee meeting, and we, that's our second one. All, this, all the, the 14 chairs of the 14 district committees were on. And we had an hour-long meeting that was started with, by Eric Nesbitt, who briefed all of us on the legislation that you've all heard about that's coming out of the Senate. As you know, there's also a bill coming out of the House. And those two pieces of legislation, when they're melded together, are going to create an opportunity for us to have a fair election in 2022. So a lot of our focus is on that, is on, the, is on making sure that there's election integrity and we can do that with legislation and if uh, that legislation is not passed by, the, by our legislature, which I'm sure it will be, but if it's not signed by the governor, then we have other plans to make sure it becomes law before 2022. That plan, and many of you have heard me say this when I talked to you on the phone, because I talked to many, many of you on the phone when I was running, that plan includes taking that legislation and getting the signatures necessary for a legislative initiative so it can become law without uh, Gretchen Whitmer's signature. So, and to get those signatures, 
we're going to have a program where we pay the counties to gather the signatures so they will have the resources to support your county commissioners and your local officials and your township supervisors because having that bench in place, having those people be successful is so important to the future of our party. We've got to start from the bottom up. And this next election will not be won in Lansing. It's going to be won by our counties being strengthened and the, and the work that can come from all of you in this club as well as this county. I'd like to see this county turn red again. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. I'd like to see us take the, the commission back, the county commission back. We only need one more extra seat and we can do that. So we want to make sure that you all have the opportunity to have the resources in your treasury to do the things to help your local officials be successful in this coming election. We have 46 days ago we came into the party headquarters, which I'm proud to say does bear my name, and I was, I was sad to see what it had become. I mean, literally we had to clean it up, not just from a financial point of view, but from a physical point of view. There were, there were three boxes of rat poison on the second floor. Literally, there were. Um, and I'm sure there were plenty of rats there for it. But um, that being said, that was all cleaned up. And we moved forward with raising the resources to make sure that we're successful in this coming election. Our job now is to soften up those three witches and make sure that when we have good candidates to run against them, that they are ready for the for the burning at the stake. So, <laughs> and maybe the press heard that too. <laughs> Pardon? Did you include Stavanauer? She's not running in 2022. I thought she was. Oh, we have term limits. No, she is not running. The, the Senate is not up in 2022. We have we have three statewide elections that we have to win: the governorship. Secretary of State and the Attorney General. We have eight yes. statewide Ed Board seats that we want to, we have to win. We want to take back the Supreme Court. That's ultimately really important. And for those of you who have not followed, the loss of the Supreme Court was probably the biggest loss we've had in this last three or four years. And we, we also want to keep our legislative majorities. I'd like to see our House go from the 57 or 8 votes that we have there to 65. And the same thing with the state senate, where we have 22. Actually, we only have 20. There's two special elections. But hopefully, we'll have 22 and see that go to 26 or 27. Now, you may say that's awfully ambitious, but in 2010, 9 and 10, when I was, uh, when I was chair the first time, we had the same kind of situation, but only worse. The Senate was, was tied 2020, and, or no, let's see. 2119 we had as a lead and we ended up with 27 seats. In the House we were 20 seats down and we ended up with a 16 seat majority. And that was done in one year. We won all eight state, state ed board seats and we won all the statewide elections. And so it can be done and we're going to need all your help in order to accomplish that. Is anybody getting Donald Trump to help? Well, Would he come here to campaign? I'm not sure. We'll ask him. Ask him to run for governor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, really. By the way, I'd be remiss. I know, I, I'm not sure whether she was recognized before, but one of my, our vice chairs, Mary, Marion Sheridan, is here. Thank you. Our grassroots vice chair and grassroots is certainly one of the basis of our party. Without the grassroots, we cannot win. Um, let me see what else I have in my thing here. Um, we've just started a plan called Battleground Michigan where we're doing voter IDs with the counties. We're making $2 million available to the counties for being able to reach certain goals and identify our voters early so that we can start making sure that we get them out to vote. Remember, this is an off-year election, and getting out the vote is even more important. If we can have anything near the turnout we have in a presidential year, we'll easily win across the board. So that's a way for us, again, to get money to the county so that they can, they can support their local elections and at the same time get the information we're going to need to get out the vote. We have, uh, our senior staff has now all been hired. Um, Jason Rowe, who you'll hear from in just a few minutes, is our executive director. Paul Cordes is our chief of staff. 
and that's a little unusual to have both a chief of staff and a, and a um, an executive director. But I, I'm not, as I haven't in the past, I'm not taking a salary, so it leave, opens up a little room to have that extra leadership that can make a big difference. Sarah Anderson, who was my deputy chief of staff in 17 and 18, and our communications director is back as external affairs director, and that's a new position that Jason will talk to you more about. Ted Goodman is here with a lot of experience, and I'm sure all of you have seen the results of his work. We've had four press conferences already. I think we have a fifth tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Those are the first five pro press conferences that the party has had in more than two years. And that... Yay! Yes, Ted, I'll let you clap for yourself on that. <laughs> um, Andrea Pollock is going to be our political director. She was with us again in 17 and 18, has great experience in, in the politics of this state, and will help lead us into our some of the other things we'll be working on, including Battleground, Michigan. Um, and, and then we've just recently retained Madeline Cordes, who is our chief of staff's new bride and she's going to be our finance director so we'll be starting soon so we've been able to put together the senior staff i think we're in good shape with the places that we're that we've been able to fill and these are all experienced people who will be able to to help work with you and and work across this state to bring us to where i hope to be and in fact i know we will be which is a very bright red state in 2022 with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jason, and I'll be happy to answer any questions after he speaks. Yes, I'll answer it now. What's the future of uh, Fred Upton and Peter Marsh? Yeah. Yeah. That's up to the voters. You have to speak out. That's up to the voters. Would you mind repeating the question? The question was, what happens to Peter Myers and and and, and um, Upton? And the answer is that the primary voters are going to determine whether they're going to be on the ballot. <coughs> Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, my name is Michael Shalal um, from Macomb County. Uh, I have a lot of questions for you, to be honest. Uh, you know, we, we've all witnessed the uh, previous leadership and how failed uh, it was to the people and the Constitution. Uh, I don't think they represented the people. So my question to you would be, how different is your leadership going to be than the previous one? And how are you going to turn Michigan Republican Party from party of exclusive to party of inclusive. We all saw that President Trump was able to draw in people from all other minority groups and all walks of life. The party, and I'm, I'm speaking as a Middle Eastern American, uh, I'm Chaldean, and so uh, to me this is very personal because my community, as much as I try to pull my community to come and vote for the Republican Party, uh, they're aligned idealistically with the Democratic Party. And the only reason why they would come out and vote in any general, in any election would be because they have a uh, someone running from the community. So my goal is to get them closer to the party, but I can't do this single-handedly. I want the party to show the people that we are the party for all people, including minorities, because so we are not losing these votes that are going to the Democrats. The, Well, I'm going to answer your question because you are the party. Everyone here is the party. The state committee. I'm the chairman of the state committee. I'm not. The, I'm not the chairman of the the state. I'm not. I'm the chairman of the state committee. And there, there are from this 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 district. There are 14 members of the state committee. That's who the party is. They're your neighbors. You elected them. They have a district chair. That's who I've met with today on uh, by phone with all 14 of those district chairs. That's who the party is, and they all believe as you do. We have to be inclusive. We have to have we have to do things in a different way than we've done in the past. We have to follow what we have to have a responsive government. I've given up the idea that we're going to have a limited government. We need a responsive government. <laughs> If anybody's seen the bureaucracy shrink, no one's been able to do it, including President Trump. But we have to have a, but what he did do is he was responsive to the needs of our people, and that's that's all we can really ask for. So, how, how, do, we, how do we get to the point where we can get these Uptons and Myers out of, out of there? I mean, who are we going to put up and say, hey, 
this is this is the people that we are back. We happen to live in a democracy where uh, officials are elected by the people. The only way you can change the leadership is to get out and vote. Actually, no. we don't. We donate as donors. We're giving to the GOP, and that money is then being used to help candidates like Meyer and Upton. Yes. Exactly. We want to continue to donate, but we want to make sure that our donations aren't going to candidates that have not supported us. How do we do that? How can we help the GOP grow? Well, first of all, we're focused on the things that I told you before. We're focused on the three witches. We're focused on the eight Ed Board seats. We're focused on the majorities for the House and the Senate, our State House and Senate. We can't win with them when we don't have our own leadership that has our backs. Right. Amen. That's exactly right. we got two witches in our own party. That's what we need to worry about. The witches in our own party. Who has... Well, other than, uh, ma'am, other than assassination, I have no other way other than voting him out. Okay? You people have to go out there and support their opponents. You have to do what you need to get out the vote in those areas. That's how you beat people. We don't, we don't supply their funds. We do not supply their funds. They raise their own funds. Can you repeat the question? In response to his question about minorities, I think that we really need to educate people as to... In re with regard to the, uh, the question about minorities, I really believe we need to do a better job of educating the people as to what the Republican Party has done for minorities historically. We have been the party for minorities. We're the ones that signed the Emancipation Proclamation. We're the ones who eliminated slavery. We're the ones that were in favor of every civil rights bill. We were the ones that were in favor of the constitutional amendments that allowed minorities to vote and so forth. So we need to do a better job of educating the public as to what we have done. That's where it's at, because they're not hearing it. They're not hearing that message. Two years ago, for chair. Uh, what about it? What? Do you know of any? I'd like to say we're we are recording this. It'll be on our YouTube channel. But we won't have the sound of you if it's not through the microphone. So th the answer to you is Stan Grot has been the district chair for nearly 20 years, and during that time he turned a blue county red. We had a two-year contract with him to help us recruit, uh, to recruit precinct delegates and to make sure that county stayed as red as it has been. As you well know, it was one of the counties that helped elect President Trump two years ago, four years ago. So the contract has been turned over to the Secretary of State. They're reviewing it. There's, there's, it's perfectly legal and appropriate. And I might just add to you that I gave way more than that amount of money to the state party during that period of time. But it was an appropriate contract for his help. He was planning to leave as a Secretary of State candidate as it happens anyhow. You can ask him that. And we hired him to do a job for over a two-year period of time at $10,000 a month, and we settled with him to take $40,000 less. And that's how they ended, the amount ended up at $200,000. There was no fraud involved.